Welcome back to the Hot Tibet's Daily Pick Show for Sunday, January 16th. Back with some more college basketball action for today. Before we jump into Sunday's card, quick recap for Saturday. At the moment, we sit at two and three. Still got three games left, though. Stanford at the moment is not looking good. Mississippi State currently battling against Alabama, and we still have LMU left to play tonight. So hopefully we can pull this out, get this thing to profitable for Saturday. But make sure you're following on Twitter, Bet Stamp, YouTube community to see the results for all of those games and all of that stuff but without further ado let's get into sunday's card The starting off Sunday, the first game I want to take a look at, Kinesis taking on Manhattan. Now, Kinesis comes into this game 5-10 and 10 on the season. Manhattan is 8-4. and four. And Both these teams have been relatively decent, um, maybe a little bit below average. Manhattan, 247 in Kempom, 275 in the Hot Tibet rankings. Kinesis, 284 in Kempom, and 257 in the Hot Tibet rankings. Um, but for Manhattan, they obviously, you know, their first game back from their over three-week-long COVID break on, against Iona on Friday. And, you know, Iona is a tough team this season. Um, they sort of hung around in that game, end up losing by 12 points ish, something around there. Um, but they get the loss there. Hopefully they can, you know, get that COVID rust off of them and then bounce back here in this game. And I really do think they were because they're playing great, good basketball um, before they went on break there. Jose Perez is the leading scorer for this Manhattan team. He's dropping 15.2 points per game. Warren Williams has also done a pretty good job dropping 10.3 points per game. And overall, Manhattan's not the best shooting team in the world. A 48.7 effective field goal percentage, 31.4 from beyond the arc, as well as 72.6% of their free throws. But when we look over to Kinesis, the story doesn't get a whole lot better. Sure, they got the win over Quinnipiac um, to start off the heart of conference play here. They followed it up with the, the loss to Niagara on the road on Friday. And they got a couple of scores. You know, Malik Green leads the team with 14.1 points per game. Armand Hadid leads dropping 12.7 points per game as well. But overall, this Kinesis team has really just struggled to shoot the basketball this season. They've actually done an even worse job than Manhattan, a 45 point for effective field goal percentage only in 29.5 percent from the on the arc as well as 72.3 percent of their free throws not really any shooting stats that jump off the board i mean the free throws are all right um but they definitely have not shot the ball super well one thing they do do okay on the offensive side of the ball though is holding on to the basketball they're only turning it over on 16.2 percent of their possessions which i guess is somewhat of a plus but when you're not really converting that into a points it only means so much they are 38th though um in that category but offensively, they just haven't been good. 218 adjusted offensive efficiency, according to Ken Palm. Manhattan does edge them out here, coming in 242. And Manhattan also edges them out on the defensive side of the ball. Manhattan is 246 in adjusted defensive efficiency, while Kinesis is 262. Um, but if Kinesis has one bright spot on the defensive side of the ball, it is their perimeter defense. They've done a pretty good job defending the three this season. They've only allowed a 30% three-point percentage on the season, 48th best in the country um, for a defense. Not to say that Manhattan's the best three-point shooting team in the world either, um, but it's definitely going to you know, be a little bit of an advantage for them there. Um, but Manhattan hasn't been horrible on the defensive side of the ball. They do a really good job forcing turnovers, which um, I think will help to, to boost that number down a little bit for Kinesis. Manhattan forces turnovers on 20.7% of their possessions. They're 82nd in the country in forcing turnovers. Um, and this will be a true test for this Manhattan team. It'll really be, quote-unquote, their first real game back um, after their COVID break. I, I don't put a whole lot of weight in that. That Iona lost one Iona is a great team and two the first game back in over three weeks it's going to be a hard one to mid no matter what team you are um and really I think you know getting back into the swing of things getting back to home um in this game I think is a great spot for them and overall Kinesis is a team that has struggled especially on the road and I think they continue to struggle here so give me Manhattan minus four here in this game the next game we're taking a look at on Sunday's card, Bradley taking on Illinois State. Bradley comes into this game 8-9 and nine on the season. Illinois State is 8-8. Eight and eight. And for this Bradley team, they've been pretty good. You know, 121st in Kempom, 152 in the Hot Tibet rankings. Illinois State, 203 in Kempom, 216 in the Hot Tibet rankings. But I have been impressed with what I've seen out of Illinois State this year. I'm sure, you know, losses to Valpo and Drake in their last two games. But by no means have they been a horrible team, especially at home this season. They have just played so, so strong and, and looked like kind of a completely different team um, in their home road splits. One big part of this Illinois State team is Antonio Rivas. He leads the team in scoring with 20.8 points per game. And whenever you have a guy scoring over 20 points, you really rely on him a lot to, to produce. And when he's having a night, this Illinois State team is, is pretty 
unstoppable, um, at least in you know Missouri Valley standards. Um, but they looked very good when he's on when on target. Cy Chapman has also been a good scorer for them too, dropping 15.3 points per game. And overall, they've just been a really, really good scoring team this season. They're hitting 53.7 effective field goal percentage, 39.2 from beyond the arc. Very good three-point shooting team, as well as 74.3% of their free throws. So as far as shooting the ball goes for Illinois State, I really have absolutely nothing to complain about from them. Looking over to the Bradley, they enter this game following the win over Evansville. Um, and while this team, well, both these teams really, um, you know, have, have pretty average records right around 500 in Bradley's losses this season, they've been a pretty competitive team. They haven't just given up. They haven't just rolled over. Um, and a lot of that is because of their scores as well. Terry Roberts leads this team in scoring with 15.5 points per game. Uh, Marvin Leons is also dropping 10.9 points per game for Bradley. And overall, they might not be the as well of a shooting team as Illinois State. But they still shot the ball okay, a 51.4 effective field goal percentage and 35.7% from the on the arc. Um, but the really struggle they've had shooting the basketball comes from the free throw line. They're only hitting 64.2% of their free throws, 339th in the country in that category. Um, one part of the offense, though, for Bradley that has been strong is the rebounding. Renique Mast is pulling down 7.9 rebounds per game. And overall, um, on the offensive side of the ball, they're pulling down 31.5% on the offensive glass. But it still hasn't helped boost that offensive efficiency a whole lot. There's still 167th in adjusted offensive efficiency compared to Illinois State, who's 104. And a bigger reason why Illinois State is so high um, in Kip Palm's rankings, at least why I think, is because of how quick a basketball they play. On the offensive side of the ball, their average possession length is only a 15.7 seconds, 20th fastest offensive possession um, in the country. And while they struggled a little bit on defense, don't get me wrong, Illinois State 307 in defensive efficiency. Um, the defense doesn't concern me a whole lot. I think Brad has more problems on the offensive side of the ball um, that, that an Illinois State does necessarily defensively. And Bradley's defense is good. Don't get me wrong. 93rd adjusted defensive efficiency is very, very good. But Bradley really hasn't shown me anything as of late. Um, they've been a team that I, I, I think has, you know, got a little bit ahead of themselves. Um, and I think their offense, especially for Bradley, continues to struggle in this game. I think Illinois State heading back home um, is really in a good spot. You know, being the a slight underdog in this one, I'm taking Illinois State plus two here against Bradley. And that wraps it up for Sunday's college basketball card. We see more college basketball action for today. Head over to hotdepest.com, take a look at the computer model picks up there, as well as got NFL playoffs, NBA, NHL, UFC pay per view coming up next week. So take a look at all of that stuff. Also, follow the Hot Tippets main account on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok to stay up to date with everything the computer model is putting out, as well as follow me at Hot Tippets Chris on Twitter and Instagram to stay up to date with all the content I'm doing, as well as on the Best Stamp app where you can get early access to all of my picks the second that I record each episode. And last but definitely not least, if you're watching here on YouTube, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future content, and most importantly, drop a comment down below. Let me know who you guys are betting on for Sunday's college basketball card. And thanks for watching today's show. I will see you guys tomorrow.